Okay, I think we're ready to go. I was I was out there for a minute. All right, so I guess I'll get started, Jamie. Yes, Ms. Scott. We're here to talk about understanding the Constitution and its application. This is competency two of the Florida Civic Literacy Exam. Um, just a few things about the exam itself. We do not offer it. It is offered at the testing center and and finding out when it's offered and signing up and whatever you have to do for that. Um, only need a 60 to pass. So a D essentially. So hopefully you'll get way better than that. The other thing I want to warn you of, and I warned the last group of this, and we had comments that said it wasn't detailed enough. We cannot cover every detail of what you need to learn for this. This is really an expanded study guide. You know how sometimes your teacher before a test will say, these are the things you need. They'll have like a whole class of what these are the things you need to study for the test. That's kind of what this is. It's a, what do you need to study for the test? We'll give you some outline. We'll give you some background. We'll give you some commentary. Um, by the way, Jamie, when you chat, it covers the whole screen. So, <laughs> okay. So I, I mean, we just tell them out loud. Please enter your email in the chat. Um, so just so you know, this is not going to go into the nitty gritty of every one of these things. It's going to go really fast. Um, we're going to hit the highlights, and we're going to show you some resources to study more on your own. Okay. Let's see. Oh, oh, somebody did. Yeah, we just need your email. The first part of your TCC email address will be and fine. Then we'll send you. We'll send you information later. Okay. And so these are the. The next one is just our competency. These are the four competencies. We have a class on competency one, the principles and practices. If you want the recording of that, let us know, and we'll send you the recording of the first one. Um, today we're doing understanding the Constitution. Next time we'll do founding documents. And then the last one, which is like early November, will be understanding the Supreme Court decision. And some of these cover will be related to the first one because these items are interconnected. Yes. It's not like we can just do the Constitution and it's alone. Some of the right. things we bring up today would have been covered like the concept in detail in the first or It'll be in the next one with the founding document. Right. It's all so interconnected. interconnected and that's know? what this does. So we just did a good, this is like a table of contents. What are the, the articles? Just believe it or not, there are only seven articles. And you've heard of uh, the three that establish our government. It has legislative, executive, and judicial. And you will see something. That's what the legislative, the Congress is the and the longest. Is that telling you something about where the founding fathers thought the power or should be? Not with the president, like many people think, and not with the judicial. Not that they're not important, but they thought more for the other people. All right, so the U.S. Constitution was pinned by James Madison. He's called the father of the Constitution. Obviously, they weren't all his ideas, but he's the guy that actually sat down and wrote it. Um, and that's, that is a question that's very likely to come up, okay? Who pinned the Constitution? Who pinned the Declaration of Independence, okay? Yeah, we don't want to get it wrong. And then this is just showing that when the things got, it's good to get a good timeline of this, the United States Constitution, 1788, the Bill of Rights, 1791. And then look at the amendments, 11 through 27 was a lot later. For, 200, for the past 200 years, they've been passing amendments. So this is just, we don't need to know all of this. The most important thing is what is Congress? 
And it, it goes through like the House of Representatives. You guys know that how many people are in the House? How do they determine how many people are in the House? So every year, every, every 10 years, people take why you're taking that census. One reason. By the population. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The house is done by the state, the population of the state. So this year, Florida got one extra house mm -hmm. member. But we didn't get another Senate member because the Constitution tells us two people. Two senators per state, no matter what side. And that the idea is to keep things sort of balanced. We have one house where the more people are in your state, um, the more votes you get. We have another house that every state gets the same number of votes. And every state gets the same number of votes. The Senate is really the more powerful of the two houses of Congress. They both, they're pretty final say so on things. So the founders idea was to have some representation by population, but then other uh, representation by state. Yeah, and she's saying that the, see, these are good questions you might have in, in history class. She's saying that Senate, uh, guess what? If the president dies, the vice president dies, who becomes the president? Not a senator, the person in charge of the house. Mm -hmm. So the powers, when they wanted to separate powers, boy, they wanted to separate mm -hmm. powers. So this is just something to kind of get used to, look at it. And it might say which article is such and such. How do you make a bill? Did any of you watch I'm Just a Bill just from, from uh, Schoolhouse Rock? Schoolhouse Rock? Nope, you're a little young for that. If we had time, we would watch it. <laughs> okay. And see, this is the second, the, the second. Okay. And the executive branch establishes the president and vice president, tells what the powers the president has, the duties of the president, and in the news a lot lately, impeachment. Okay. So anything that has to do with the executive branch um, and how his powers are both enumerated and limited. You know, he can't just, he's not dictator for life. He can't just make laws. The powers of the president. Judicial branch, and this is both the federal court and the. There's a federal court here in Tallahassee, mm -hmm. so they, they have they divided the state into parts, and then we have federal jurisdiction, and that's where each one has before it gets to the Supreme Court. So sometimes it'll go through several, like a um, Affordable Care Act went through Virginia, I think California, mm -hmm. this, the one that was here in Florida, it went through several up, 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 and then the Supreme Court finally took it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have, there's no rule about that. It is laid out in like general how this system works and then precedence was set. Precedence is how did they do it? Before, how did our founding fathers do it before? So it's written out, but not one. One thing I will say is, um, since the founding, both the judicial branch and the executive branch have seized more and more power. You know, and that's kind of the way things work. Once you give people power, they want more power. The founders were very invested in the exec in the legislative branch, the people who made the laws. But since then, both the executive and, and right or wrong, you know, we can argue about whether they should have done it or not, but both the judicial branch and the executive branch have done a lot, have made a lot more decisions than the founders intended for them to do. And so then I would say that the House and the Senate could be more power, They've given away some of their power. Mm -hmm. And if we just had a few more senators or got rid of the filibuster, you would start seeing that legislative law popping. Yeah. And this happened under Clinton administration. But they had a strong House, a strong Senate. Mm -hmm. And in that case, it was even more positive that the president was the same as the House mm -hmm. and the Senate. And a lot of laws were. But because things, and when she said more senators, 
she means on either side having a greater majority. If you have a 60% majority, you with a 51 49 split. Yeah. Okay. And we'll get those um, distinctions. Just a, a, a sort of technical note if you are on and you do not have a question, will you please mute yourself? If you do have a question, you're more than welcome to unmute yourself and jump in. We're just hearing a little feedback, and I'm hoping that that's coming from somebody who's unmuted. All right. Yeah. This, this is article four. And I actually talk more about clauses later. You're going to have to be responsible for some clause. And it just has a section called clauses. And I just kind of highlighted the most important for the sake of time. Mm -hmm. So you can see one of the soon, because hopefully Puerto Rico eventually will be a new state. Or District of Columbia, they're the other one kind oh, of. Oh yeah, line. District of Columbia. And I put pictures of, why did I put a picture of Alaska and Hawaii, and Hawaii on this slide? Anyone know? They were the last two states admitted to the union. They were the most recent. So we have two new states. Have you heard of the, the show Hawaii 5.0? Yeah. The reason it's called 5.0 is it's the 50th state admitted to the union. But just fun trivia. Yep. Yeah. Um, the amendment process. This is how the amendments get passed. You and look at very difficult. And the founding fathers wanted it difficult. They wanted to limit government. This is something that you're going to keep hearing over and over and over. They did not like the monarchy. They mistrusted government. So they tried to limit power throughout the Constitution. So one way, notice to get an amendment, one way Congress can vote with a two-thirds vote in each house, which is really hard to do. A national convention can be called by Congress if two thirds of the states want it to happen. So the state legislatures, will, and this has been in the news for different things, Roe mm -hmm. versus Wade. Some people say we need a state a convention, a national mm -hmm. convention. There was something else, national. Mm -hmm. Really hard to get two thirds of the states say, yeah, we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. But then after you do this, guess what you have to do? Then it goes into the legislature and three-fourths of the states for the legislatures have to approve it, or in the convention, three-fourths of the states. So it's not easy to pass. And if you're paying attention to the news at all right now, try to imagine getting three-fourths of the states to do anything. Okay. Maybe marijuana. Maybe marijuana. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Marijuana. Yeah, we have somebody. Can you, if you have a question in the chat, can you say it? Because, well, yeah, there'll be a link to the that's why I want you to add your email to the chat and we'll give you send this out the link. Now, All right, so the supremacy clause, speaking of marijuana, we'll come back to that. The Constitution and the laws of the United States. Suits thereof, because it's nice old fashioned language, you don't have to memorize this. And all treaties which shall be made shall be supreme law of the land. That means that federal trumps state. Many, many, many states have legalized, decriminalized, in some other way made marijuana legal, right? Including Florida. It is still illegal federally. If the federal government decided it wanted to enforce, Marijuana laws, all of these people with their medical marijuana cards, they could put their foot down and start sending people to jail for it. Oops, you should bless you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so because federal law does technically trump state law, they have decided, obviously, a law doesn't matter if you don't enforce it. They have decided at this point not to enforce it. Yeah, you know why? Mm -hmm. This is Interesting reason. Colorado was one of the first states to pass the law for recreational purposes. Mm -hmm. The federal, the feds came down and they tried to convince people 
and the people of the state of good Colorado, which were the jurors, yeah, they decided that the people were not guilty. Colorado, they could do that. Yeah. So then the feds started to take the money because banks are federal. Mm -hmm. And in Colorado, they use cash yeah. for marijuana. It, that is probably the biggest thing that's done is try to control a marijuana, marijuana distribution by not, like it's still hard for distributors to get bank accounts and stuff. That's probably more detail than we need to go into, yeah, but it, it, is, just it is just a good example of this kind of paradox between federal sovereignty and state sovereignty. It, oh, one more thing, sorry. So we say this allows for, the, it also allows for national debt. States can't carry debt. States have to um, balance their budgets every year, but the nation can carry a debt because they control the nationally, we have a bank, we all have one currency, right? Your $5 bill works in Georgia or, New Hampshire or California because the national people control the money. Okay. Which wasn't always true. Which wasn't always true, but it is <laughs> now. Like that's one of the things the nation has taken on itself. So now this is uh this was just the, the actual ratification back in 1787 when they ratified it. And if you want more information, these are the websites you can get to actually read how did it get ratified. People did not want to ratify it because, again, when they read these seven articles, they said, don't have any protection for ourselves, mm -hmm. which is why we got the Bill of Rights. So the Bill of Rights. So between the time they finished writing this and the time it was ratified, they were writing something called Federalist and Anti-Federalist Papers to argue both sides. We need to get this Constitution done as is. We need it with a Bill of Rights. We need it without a Bill of Rights. As you know, we got the Bill of Rights. All right. So let's see how to shorten this. Expressed, enumerated, and delegated powers. Expressed powers and enumerated powers. Really, those are like those are things that the federal government says we're in charge of. We're in charge of the money. We're in charge of um, certain federal crimes. We're in. It's a picture. There we go. Okay. Yeah. It. We're in charge of like setting up the Congress and the executive branch and all of that. Um, but there are also kind of what we call implied powers. Most of the implied powers went to the states because the last of the Bill of Rights says if the federal government isn't in charge of it, the state decides. Which is why the federal government makes some laws about voting, like you can't have a poll tax. The states get to decide how they run their elections. So the federal government is really kind of there, in theory, to protect these big things. Yes, you have the right to vote, okay? But the states get to decide how they do that. Um, and then it was in here. Yeah, necessary and proper. Once again, like I said, enforcement. If you can't enforce a law, it might as, not, might as well not be a law. You ever heard a mom that's like, Johnny, don't do that? And then the kid goes and does it, and they're like, Johnny, don't do that. And the kid goes and does it, and they never like make Johnny not do the thing. If you don't make Johnny not do it, might as well not be a law. That's what necessary and proper has to do with. Does the government have the ability to enforce the laws it's put in place? And then the Supreme Court has to come. It's not mm -hmm. expressed. Clearly, but it was like they're saying, oh no, it's it. We believe that we have this right to do it. And sometimes that, that like they did in Affordable Care Act, and then the Supreme Court decides who has power. Like it gives an example here the power to control immigration. States want to get all up in arms about that, but the federal government ultimately has the right to control immigration. Um, and then acquire territory, quell insurrection. So, and this, this was one way to say it. And then the picture that I had, that's mm -hmm. another way. concurrent and yeah, concurrent powers are shared by the state and uh national government. Um, and then reserved powers are ones just for the state. So, you're going to see the different vocabulary. Sometimes they'll use concurrent power, they don't mean share. 
sometimes you'll hear inherent power. A state will claim they have power if the federal government doesn't say anything. So that's where that inherent is kind of, it's weaker than implied. Right. Yeah. And then amendments and selected incorporation. All right, Bill of Rights. Yeah, oh, wait, this is you. Go yeah. Ahead. Now, this is just talking about this, like almost like an overview, overview again. This is talking about you have certain rights that people have. And again, how has the government been limited? We have the right to have guns. And the government can say, well, you can't just bring a gun in here and start shooting people. And then the state can put something on top of that. So limitations. So it, it's talking about the safeguards and limits of individual rights plus our rights. And this we detailed in that left, uh, mm -hmm. the one right before it. And it says, do no, re this comes up over and over again, the mm -hmm. 10th Amendment, the power not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by the states, are reserved to the states or to the people. And this is one of the things that people write you'll see going to court. I think you had mentioned about the cake and yeah. cake building and the homosexual yeah. that wanted to get a cake for a wedding and the cake members. I have the right to not bake it. So this is an amendment 10, right? Mm -hmm. So you can look at how it came out. It's All right. Summarize. We're going to talk. We I would do a whole hour on the um, just the amendment if I could. But we're going to talk real quick about the biggie. First Amendment is not, it's freedom of speech, but also the freedom of press, freedom of assembly, and the right to protest. Big, important rights. Second Amendment, right to bear arms. Third Amendment, doesn't matter much to us, but it mattered a lot to the houses, and they said no more. Okay, the Fourth Amendment, protect Americans from unreasonable searches and seizures. Okay, they can't um, they can't search your car unless they have a reason. Um, and you know, read up on these, find out what your rights are, and how to um, exercise them. Fifth Amendment is the one. I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. The right not to incriminate yourself, but also your spouse. I think it only goes to spouses now. Spouses have to test. Yeah, a spouse cannot be forced to. Uh, testify against their spouse. Uh, the Sixth Amendment provides a speedy and public trial. Um, so you can't be hauled off into some back room and have a trial that nobody gets to know about. The Seventh Amendment is a trial by jury. The Eighth Amendment prevents those accused from suffering cruel and unusual punishment. The Ninth Amendment, no constitutional rights should be used to infringe upon the rights. So, no one, this is where you get into arguments about does your freedom of speech trample my freedom of religion? You know, people get into this court over things like that. That's what the Ninth Amendment is about. And then the Tenth Amendment is the one we've already talked about. It's not in the Constitution, it's the states get to decide. These are things you want to really review and get to know, yeah. you know, well when you do the test. I have this. You don't need. I just did it for fun. Yeah, I just did it for fun. This just gives an overview of all the amendments. We can sit here and talk about every single amendment. What you might want to do is look at, like, try to group them in your own mind where you have voting rights when women were the last to get the vote, and look and look at when other um, defined citizenship. Where did the People of here. The 14th, people, yeah. Well, yeah. the 14th Amendment is the equal protection. And then, but denied, yeah. yeah. Prohibiting, denying to vote. So it kind of cluster them like the ones that you do with voting. And when you look at a sample test, you'll see it by proxy, you'll be well off, you know, just knowing mm -hmm. these ones are for. And voting. a lot of them are voting rights. The equal protection, 14th Amendment with equal protection. Yeah. Uh, if we send you that other. PowerPoint, you'll get a lot about equal protection. Um, 
I'm okay. trying to see if there's any other. A lot of them are procedural and not that important, like change dates for the start of oh, well, the like, you said, you were with the voting age. Yeah. I knew there was four. four yeah. to do with the voting so some of them are more important, some of them are less important, but read over them and kind of get to know yeah. vaguely what they're about. So the basic broad ideas that you need to know and notice you're going to see it copy directly off the sheet. And again, it had safeguards, limits, constitutional provision, and impacts. So those were very similar. But this is another one, uh, federalism and selective incorporation. And it, it has to do with the same. No state shall make or enforce any law, the states, which abridge the privilege or immunities of citizens of the United States. So this one was, you could see many examples of people um, going, you usually have to go to the Supreme Court to the uh, equal rights for school. They used mm -hmm. to say, they used to say, well, a black person said, hey, this school is not like that school over there. It went to court and finally, um, this stuff of equal was taken away. Mm -hmm. That's an example of this. So basically what it's saying is, the state can't make laws that impinge your personal rights. Okay. A state, uh, and they recently, uh, Governor DeSantis passed an anti riot law, which some people see as an anti protest law. Okay. That we saw that the First Amendment said you had the right to protest. It hasn't happened yet, but I have a feeling eventually that law will make it to the Supreme Court. So that the Supreme Court will decide, is this law infringing people's personal liberty or is it not? We don't know yet. Um, I have a opinion if you want to talk to me afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, it, it will eventually probably reach the Supreme Court because as soon as someone has standing to take it there um, to decide whether or not it is impinging a personal liberty or not. And this is my favorite. This yeah, is, I love Jamie talk about I love the federalism versus the hundred. I don't know why they, they put this together. I wouldn't have put this in this a little bit, but we're going to see this again in the next one because there's a federalist document and there's an anti federalist document. Lots of letters. They were writing letters left and right. Time they wrote the first seven and before they got the Bill of Rights that ended up getting a Bill of Rights. The federalists didn't even think they needed. Than the anti federalists. But these letters are so fun to read. I think so. The language, <laughs> the language, <laughs> but it, if you just know that anti federalists didn't believe in big government and they would, if we have, we can thank them for the Bill of Rights. This group wanted a strong central government. Are any of you fans of Hamilton the musical? Anybody? You are? Oh, I, I've, I've watched it on uh, Disney Plus a couple times. The whole second act is him trying to get the Constitution back and a federal banking system. Back. He was all pro strong central government. And the whole second act is about, well, until he has an affair. <laughs> <laughs> the second act is about him trying to get a stronger federal government while these folks over here were for a weaker federal government. Okay, so these, like I said, you're going to need clauses. These are some of the clauses you're going to need. And look at, we already talked about the su supremacy, full faith and credit, commerce. It has due process clause, equal protection clause, necessity and proper elastic clause. First Amendment is part of the clauses. And I just did the necessary and proper elastic clause. And it's not that... Um, it, it, I like the proper clause, but it literally is taking the idea of the implied power because it had the to all make all laws which shall be necessary and proper for carrying into effect. So they grab the words necessary and they call it the necessary and proper. So you see, they already talked about it. Already. This is where we were talking about enforcement. You don't have the right to enforce it. 
it might not, might as well not exist. So the necessary, and it makes it elastic, meaning the federal government can, can spread its wings, <laughs> exercise its power to enforce the rules it's already made. I was thinking of the limitations again. This was this was brought up last time. It's brought up again. And the most important things, like we were saying, the bill help limit the government, the federal government, the state government with our personal rights. But you saw they can limit the the right to bear arms. You have to have a background check. So each of these is just talking about those different limitations. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people call it police powers for public safety health and welfare, which we saw with masks. Mm -hmm. Some people were very anti-mask idea. When they had smallpox, it happened. People were giving fines. They did, oh, you can't right. find me. Right. But, so, is, but they're saying the government does have the right to pass laws for public welfare. And then people are like, well, no, it's about my personal right. And it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So this is the word you want you want to remember doctrine of free emption. And this is the conflict between state power and federal power, which I brought up the drug thing because it's the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I, I the marijuana it. thing really yeah. is kind of the best example right now. And this is more detail, which we don't need. See, it, it, see because the, I only did this because if you did a citizenship test, and it is in class, what's the supreme law of the land? The Constitution. So um, that actually is the supremacy clause. The supreme law of the land, the land is the federal constitution. And that's a question I do usually get. And what go the things that go to tend to go to the Supreme Court, okay, Supreme Supreme Law of the Land. The Supreme Court is there to interpret the Constitution. It make laws. But they take the law and they look at it and they say, is it constitutional or not? Does it infringe upon people individual liberty? Is it within the state's rights to establish this? Does somebody have standing to even bring this in front of us? They interpret all these laws and say, yes, this law can stand. No, this law cannot stand. Or they send it back to a lower court. There are several things they do, but that's really their job. And that's what has given them so much power is they really get to decide, does this law that the legislature passed pass muster with the constitution? And, and it's interesting. Sometimes I want to know, what do the founding fathers think? And guess what they use sometimes for that? The Federalist paper. Yeah. Okay, you love. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and that's why I like it. Yeah. And then he said, oh, wow, we went through that fast. Yeah, there's a yeah. 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 There were a lot of details we did leave out because it's so it's so if you want to read more about it, go ahead. I am going to pull up the website though, if that's okay. That's perfect. Okay. I'm gonna we're gonna show you where to study more. And please uh, yeah, yeah, we've. Oh, this is. In your canvas, are you taking your AMA for political science right now? In your canvas, you should have a link. You should have a lot talks about some of the resources for you. Um, let me know because I know one of the. The people that is in uh, the dean, or not the dean, what do they call it? The head of the person that's kind of the chair of history, he made yeah. a, a Canvas module. And I, I'm just looking at it now to see what kind of research it is. And they said that you guys should have an AMH for PLS. Uh, we're gonna okay civic so slippers folder. Oh yeah, the practice test. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And let me not forget. Last time I forgot to share when I went in. Oh no, that's not what I wanted. General, just the, just in general. When you yeah, I wanted the one that actually goes to. 
Uh, where are they? Okay, here we go. Um, this is, and let me not forget, last time I, like I said, I forgot to share once I went back on the, This is a sample test that you can get on the Florida Department of Education. Um, I'll show you how to look for it too. But as you can see, it goes through some questions, you know. And one thing you want to know about this test is it's a lot more theoretical than it is factual. So um, there's going to be less, um, you're not Okay, might be some, but as you see, it goes all the way. What is the principal function of the Constitution? Yeah. Number six, let's see if you guys can, I can't read it. Number five, what is the principal function of the Constitution? Make, make it go control plus. Oh, that did not do anything. Why it changed it the number, but it did not change. Why is it Okay, there we go. What is the principal function of the written constitution? Resolving disagreements between competing parties, confirming resistance to civil disobedience, declaring the independence of a state, outlining the structure and powers of government. Yep. We brought candy out of kidney stone, but we forgot. <laughs> okay. So as you can see, these are like, these are understanding principles. It's way more about understanding principles than it is memorizing dates. You have questions that go as far back as which of these ancient civilizations established a Republican form of government? This is the one I missed when I took it because I was thinking democracy, not Republic. So does anybody know the answer to this one? It's Roman. The Romans had a Republic. The Greeks, had a form of democracy. Yeah, democracy, exactly. They had the democracy for you know free men, um, which is how people always start. It seems like. Um, <laughs> but the Romans had a republic, so you can see that these are much more kind of. You don't see a lot of like, uh, even these dates. There's like this is a quote from a particular date. So, and, and so you're applying the information there. They did Richard Nixon. You should, apply some of the same information right well let's do 15. yeah we have second amendment third amendment fourth amendment right and fifth amendment. a man walking down a public street window shopping man is walking a robbery is reported in the same area police officers stop and search the man who is shopping on what constitutional grounds could man contest search is a violation of his rights they have Second Amendment is third amendment. Fourth. Did you have your hand up? Fourth. Fourth. Illegal searches and seizures. So I would suggest you go in and like I said, I'll tell you, I'll show you how to look for it because it's kind of tricky to find. Um, but I should send you. Yeah, we can just send you a copy of the practice test. Yeah, because it's important. So you need to know, like we said, the general ideas in each of the items. Like Article one, can you guys now tell us what article one is? I think you like multiple choice. Does it set up the legislation or the executive or the judicial or the right to bear arms? The right to bear mm -hmm. Article one. Later. Very good. She's going to go up with <laughs> real And what was second? What was the second one? What was after legislative? Executive was second, and third was, huh? Oh, good. Because yeah, those are the three branches of government. And most people, I think the executive, you know, was first, but they were thinking legislative. This is, this is something else we'll send you. This is what we're basing our PowerPoint on. This is the official supplemental guide of the Florida Civics Literacy Exam. This is where they are getting setting an outline for what you need to study. And like I said, we already did competency one. If you want to go back and look, you know, we talked a little bit about LOC and the consent of the governed. We can send you that PowerPoint. It's Federalism all in, is there again. Federalism is there again. 
the constitution just in outline form kind of what, what is the philosophy behind the constitution so it was really really theoretical what are the principles of our government um and then it goes into competency too which is what we covered today the constitution so we talked about the articles we talked about the full faith and credit clause and the admittance of new states a little bit we talked about the amendment process. We talked about federalism and anti-federalism. And so these are what we covered today. But all of these blue things are links for you to study more about. So if you really want to sit down and study the heck out of this, it's all here. All right. Um, and then competency three, which is what we'll talk about next time is all of the founding documents, uh, Declaration of Independence, but going further back, you know, we think of the Declaration of Independence as kind of the beginning of everything. Um, but, you know, it can go back as far as the Magna Carta in 1250. Okay, because some of the ideas that we have in the Declaration of Independence and in our constitution are based on the Magna Carta which is heading towards a thousand years old. Okay, so um, the, you know we came up, we we got a constitution going, but we weren't the first people to have some thought of freedom. So we will look briefly at all of these things next time, and then competency four, which could be a month's worth of lessons is gonna hit major Supreme Court decisions, major legislative decisions, and major executive action. No, we don't have time. Yeah, we did before. Last time we hit them, we did separate ones. But because we have all four competencies, we're gonna, these will all be lumped together in one big lesson. Um, but if you, you know, maybe you don't have time to come to all of our workshops, maybe you're taking the test before the workshops are offered. Once again, got links for all of these court cases. And I'm going to be honest with you, before I started doing these workshops, I would not have been able to tell you what Shank versus the United States is. So I go and look up in Oyez, which is a great website, and it tells me that it's about forced servitude in uh, the First World War. So these are some things that are important to know for the test. And what is I really like to emphasize this is not just knowledge you need for this test. This affects your life more than probably any other class. Okay. I am an English person. I love literature and I love writing, but it does not impact my life on a day-to-day -day basis as much as speech and the right to live in my own home spaces, right? So understanding this stuff is important for your life, not just for this tests that you kind of don't want to take. All right. Do you guys have any questions? Was there anything we hit that you thought we should hit harder? Is there anything we have about seven minutes left? If you've got any of y'all in the chat want to talk to us anymore? Oh, this got giant too. Okay. <laughs> Yes, sir. Um, well, um, sample test you sent for emails? Yes. Yeah. That's part of why we asked for your email. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. once you see how, as you're studying, you'll see how they frame the questions. And mm -hmm. you, yeah. Which you do. As you do it, you'll see how they want you to be able to apply these things, as, as Katie said, mm -hmm. to real life. So when you hear something in the news, you can start saying, oh, wow, now I understand that. Now I see, you may not agree, disagree. You may be on that list trying to get your state to change, get a convention started, you know, to change the constitution. Been a lot of talk to do that for mm -hmm. electoral college. To change the electoral college. I think yeah. that might be something that either the state or the legislative and Senate might be able to agree on doing and changing that amendment because today we don't like it too much. Mm -hmm. 
We didn't get the last time. I'll put a yeah, we'll we'll send all of you the um both to the link. To yeah, the link. we'll send you the link to both of them. If you missed the last, that way you can um. And what's your name? Oh, so you can study up on both of them if you want to. Um, I had more fun with the last. Look at this one was fine. But I liked the last one. But she liked the better one. <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah, the better one. Jamie likes the nitty gritty more than I do. Yeah, and I like um, when we're looking at the real documents because right before this, there was the Article of Confederation. And when you see the Article of Confederation, it was so weak that the federal government had to borrow money from the states to pay for the soldiers in the federal army. Now, that's pretty sad. And so that's why some of the people like Hamilton that liked banking, he was just so nervous that we have to borrow from the states to pay for soldiers or to pay debts. We owe debts to countries like France. And you have to pay from a state under the Article of Confederation. That's pretty embarrassing. So that's why he was more very strong federal government. So sometimes if you know the history, you know, oh, this is why they did that. Mm -hmm. yeah, these are the SP or oh yeah, they have huh? and these are the SP4. Oh my god. Just cross it out. Okay. And I'm looking for the one online. Yeah. You guys do me a favor. I forgot to type out SQR. Those of you who are watching us through Zoom, yeah, um, if you will be patient for just a minute, well, actually, we're going to email you. I think that'll work better. Yeah. We'll, when we email you links yes, and the video, it. we will also email you a survey, yes, and you can let us know how it went. I think that'll be more efficient than me trying to find the survey. <laughs> All right. So those of you who are on Zoom are free to go, unless you have, I can't even find you. No. Yeah, but cross out SQR, that was, that was my bad. I printed out the wrong one and that was my bad. So that's what Katie said, this is for SQR. I said, oh, I printed out the wrong one. Yeah. I want to all right um good night or goodbye to everyone and uh we'll hopefully you'll be here for the next time yeah, hope to see you again because that's like i said i like the document